no. They are sticking what they were playing with a bit earlier. Okay, so double Eggy. Ronos against double Zeus Isis. And we are yet again moving to the right side, which is, yet again, a spawn of Absolats, and they are spawned at the bottom. Okay, so it's going to be not right and left, but bottom and the top. Well, let's see how well this is going to go for them. So, Ayak is moving in with... Then is pausing Y. Okay. Of idle time for him, of course, due to that. But at any rate, it's not going to matter all that much. He's already moving into the offensive with offensive into the forefront with the villager, of course, to build to build the rocks somewhere around here. So he's actually moving for the side. He's not moving for the pocket, and this is or rather for the for the middle. And this is also going to be interesting to see how the players approach it. So Fen is going for, for how is it called uh, for this part of the water for the cove, for example. Uh, very asky Luda is going for the promontory. You can see that his pocket arch is going for also the left side. Very as we see nice understanding by both Atlantis and Ayak that they are going for the same spot. But this is or rather nine racing at but nine racing at position of the dog is a pretty sucky <laughs> because obviously he's going to be covering just those three fishing spots. Whereas yeah, you can see the the big nothingness in here and it's not just that it's big nothingness in here, but this posi position is basically making no sense whatsoever. I'm also questioning the positioning of Fen, but it, it is slightly better, as he's having uh, better access to the middle. But really, it's not going to do you any good at all. Whereas your opponent, Atlantis, is going to be having advantage of the fishing in the middle. And I'm really curious how Atlantis actually, or rather Nine Racing Cat, plans to play this. Because this is a really, really weird spot, weird spot to go for. You can see that the SMs are going for it funny. As the SM player is actually not joining in the middle at all. He is going for actually the right side. And this is very interesting and very different from his opponent. And yeah, this is definitely looking like that the SMs have prepared extensively. And they will be waiting with some surprise for their opponents. So nicely played and nicely executed so far by the SMs to surprise their opponents, Absolats. Let's see if they can finish with it. Let's have a look at the main bases, if there's something interesting to be seen. For example, in Kiryudai's base, not much. He's going to be facing Fen on the left, so that's going to be a, a little battle between Ra and Zeus. It's an amount of water buffaloes and of course extra gold at the back, but it's usual on this map. And we see double relic, which is one for better wood and gold gather. It's very sweet indeed. And second one is better wall hit points. Huh. Yeah, incidentally on this map it can actually help quite a lot. <laughs> if you want to wall this choke point, this is going to help quite immensely. So better myth units, crush armor, yet again pretty sweet relic. Right next to the Zeus, obviously, that's going to help also very nicely. And yet another relic is right now on Absolute's part of the map. Better unit light of sight, not bad either. It's going to help for some raiding. There is yes, two lions, kind of sucky on this map. And faster infantry build time, that's sweet. That's going to help, but it's much more important that it's actually not in the power of the opponent Zeus. As, well, for Zeus that would have been quite bad indeed for Absolute to actually counter. So a few of the wares are going to be stolen, uh, they're converted by Ajax priests, of course those boards as well I would be guessing. Whereas in the middle we see, uh, we see that so far Atlantis is having quite a decent amount of fishing boats, whereas a 9 racing cat of course is out of position altogether. But he should be probably building second dock about here, but he needs to be careful about the bear. And I kind of think that he is very right now, and second dock will be coming down about here. Basically to prevent aggro in it, as it would be pretty deadly for him in the early stage of the game. Second dog already dropped by Kiliudai as well. We've already seen uh, the blue player, oh, the green player actually having the second dog as well. And he's already under attack and Nine Racing Cat is going for it quite offensively. So it seems like that Atlantis will be in for a bit of a trouble, as he's only now 
attempting to actually build a dock, so he's going to be very, very late to go into the next age. How's it looking for the others? Uh, players still not advancing, even though he does have dental. But Valfen is already 30% in. Ra is not advancing yet. Set is right now clicking into Ptah. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of smelling the shifting sense nonsense in here. With the extra attack. By 9 racing at the position in here on the dogs. They might actually be attempting to kill the dogs by their opponents uh, faster rather than slower. And let's see if that's going to be enough. Player is right now moving into the, mi into the middle. As he's <laughs> very nicely positioning his dogs also. Onto the flanks. Basically he's going to be beast booming. That's what he's going to be doing. And well there's going to be a bit of a fight on the right as well. But it's of course quite a bit easier. For Atlantis as he's Isis because at 9 Racing Cat is losing quite a lot of resources to these dogs and I don't really expect it's going to be all that useful for him in the long run in here. So first boats are coming in from 9 Racing Cat. So far I don't see any kind of opposition as those five boats are trying to capture or rather finish the dock which is very important on the middle island which is basically the same as on Mediterranean as if you can finish it it's going to allow you to control the middle of the map as you will be having shooting dogs in a pretty crucial position you already see the dog from here and I basically doing the same thing on in the middle from the left and yeah it is really helping quite a lot especially on ghost map that highland is then trying to control this part of the map as well denying Kiludai very nicely and even though Kiludai has been attempting to wall himself in he is not successful yet and he will have to be a bit more careful about where he goes next so on the water, really not much happening so far. Let's see about this battle. Seems like that Kiluda is doing a pretty good job against Fan in this one. We won, but once actually a player joins in, so far he isn't, and he seems to be basically just booming. That's kind of interesting. Right now he's joining with some three RMS, uh, but I would be expecting that he will be actually jumping into some faster, uh, faster mythic, and I mean like really fast since he was going for the boom at the back that is basically safe for him and he might be seeing something like 10 minute fast heroic or other fast mythic and let's see if there is going to be some kind of idea for them so far he is not having uh, he's not having even armor so that's probably not going to be the case but his economy strength should be pretty good for him let's see if it is going to be enough <laughs> this scout didn't really know where to go as he was under fire from all four sides three towers and the town center but he did escape and let's see to develop somewhere else on the map on the left not much happening whereas in the middle it's developing into a pretty tough situation for tsms as they were slower actually to go for some extra boats as obviously player was slower but right now he's going in but i'm thinking he won't be strong enough as you can see that atlantis has lost one of the tcs in here and absolutes are really owning the waters so far they are doing a pretty good job of it and Atlantis with Flare are definitely not strong enough in here. You can see that Fan is not going for it at all. He's going for second DC. And some booming, but so is his opponent, Rakiludai, in the bottom. And, well, somebody else going for second DC. Not yet. Not yet. But, well, there's a bit of an offensive coming in from Nine Racing Cat, who is definitely thinking that with the support by uh, from Ayah, he will be strong enough to go for it as fast as he can. Atlantis switching to the right side as he's losing this part of the water. Well, that's nicely played by Absolut so far and well even though TSMs have prepared with some strategy they so far are not really <laughs> really encountering or rather they are not executing it well so far so Absolut are using for a shift in sense. Not sure where. Well, the construction at the back basically solves the problem for 9 racing at, but I'm really curious where the shifting sense were because I didn't see anything extra on the minimap, so I don't expect it was anything crucial anywhere. This is probably not finished wall, I would be guessing for fan, so he better be careful about it. 
But let's have a look on the water in the middle and it basically seems like that Upsalts have actually won it and quite comfortably at that. And right now it's going to be up to TSMs to think of something better or finally execute their strategy. Right now lost the TC or rather lost the village for Fen. Various player is, has finally finished second DC. That's going to be a bit of a problem for Atlantis if he cannot finish fast enough. So right now he's casting Prosperity. On at least two mining camps, the TC is going to be finished as well. With two relics, one is for gold stickles, second is for a better house and manor hit points. And he's basically taking it uh, to disallow it to fall in, into the opponent's hands. As obviously for nine racing it that would be golden. For his man horse, but well, this is not going to be happening. And this extra TC for Atlantis is very important because it is it is in the forefront and was at risk of actually being stolen by his opponent. Right now, Nine Racing is trying to control the one at the back. With second TCs also being captured by opponents or otherwise allies, Ayach and also Nine Racing at himself. So, yep, this is very nicely played. And with this water being under power. Of nine racing at reasonably soon. This TC should be safe as it was potentially in threat. If Green actually was controlling it, it could have been assaulted from the water by the siege boats. But at the same time, this is a bit of a problem for the blue player, but not much because the TC is positioned very nicely. So this water on the left is not going to be as important. But well, this TC is going to be potentially under fire from boats in the middle. But since the middle water is very nicely controlled by Absolats, even though they are still <laughs> allowing actually their opponents, especially player, to boom as he might, as he wishes. And uh, that's quite dangerous and actually quite, uh, quite, how to say it, quite sloppy by their opponents. Uh, because I'm really expecting quite beastly play by player. And you can already see that it's going to be like 11 minutes, 11 minutes 30 mythical age Zeus is going to be absolutely terribly boomed. <laughs> Let's have a look at the post game. He's having 62 villas. Iluda is doing slightly better. But, uh, well, yeah. I would be favoring the Zeus Mythical Age. Past the Zeus Mythical Age above. Uh, Terra Mythical Age, because he can do much more damage through the underworld passage, especially with nicely hidden Katascopos at the very back uh, by player. And on the left side, you can also see some cows hidden in here for a line of sight for Fen. So nicely played. 30 is being captured as well. And they got power, so let's check who is advancing into the next ages from the opponents as well. You can see full on double on the right side is going to be happening as Ayak is joining with 9 racing cat. And well, this DC should be captured by Atlantis sooner rather than later, because he will be facing quite a lot of problems. Just a matter of moments, and he needs to be prepared for that, because if he isn't, that's good. This could really pick fire for the opponents, or rather for TSMs quite badly. So we have seen Hathor for Kiliudai. There is still nothing from TSM fan. 30C from player, and let's see what the gameplay is going to be right now. I would be fully expecting some kind of underworld passage to the back, potentially at the gold release or at the, at the TC at the very back. And yeah, this could be something that will be quite problematic for his opponent to do overall. I would be really also expecting that Nine Racing Cat might be wanting to transport some buildings at the back uh, to basically cover the TC and maybe even ride off steal it. But so far, it's not happening, but he is. Moving into, into a bit of a raiding as 9 Racing Cat is having a pretty recent army right in the home base of player. So that's something that he isn't happy about. So Underworld Passage being cast. Exactly as you were expecting. So yeah, that was kind of standard play by Zeus. And well, 9 Racing Cat is going to be losing back DC. And since he doesn't have any kind of Vortex or anything at all, well, of course, this is going to be finished very, very soon. So, defensive Underworld or other Ancestors. Send Willis and ceasefire. Come on. Come on, that's exactly asking for it. Because he's losing pretty terribly against those ancestors. Oh, come on, fan. Oh, come on, player. This is not really well played all that much. Oh, come on. What is happening in here? What I am seeing? What am I seeing? He has just lost quite a lot of Myrminons or Myrminon hit points. He didn't have to call the ceasefire, but still. That was kind of obvious play, especially with the heavy raiding at the very back of his base. But he opts not to do so. And it might just work out for him, even through the traitor. 
dude, this colossi, but well, needs to be careful because obviously this was a very, very risky play. As if it doesn't work out, it's going to be backfiring on the SS very strongly. The next DC being killed. Well, a bit longer because the 45 DC was just research, but it doesn't really matter all that much to all those Colossi. And well, this is basically forcing 9 racing at to go fully back. And right now, this DC is going to be captured. And Atlantis is through to the next age and should be able to defend just by himself, even though he is going for a barracks. Kind of interesting choice. Should be probably switching into Migdos reasonably soon. It's probably not going to work out all that well for him, but fire is pretty strong. And with the Migdol. I was hoping it was Migdol, it's actually just Siege Vress. He should be able to handle his opponent just by himself, and that's exactly what actually player needs, because if he is able uh, to keep 9 racing and busy, here I basically capture his TC, he will be very soon able to deal, or rather join his allies in the battle, and that's going to be quite important for him to do very soon. So, yet again, very, very nicely played. Very nicely played with Tornado getting rid of the Underworld message, so that's two good powers getting rid of everything that was happening in here. And I would be expecting that actually this would be a pretty good spot for the SM player to go for a ceasefire because he needs to steal this DC. Uh, wow, I'm questioning this. Because he's going to be stealing or rather stopping the DC, that's okay. But looking at the amount of priests, this is going to be just a slaughter of the ancestors. But I would be really liking much more if actually the player went for this TC, cast the ceasefire, even let his opponent take the TC, still it would be 9 racing at a 2. But right now he's going to lose all the villies in here. Just moving somewhere back, trying to rebuild or rather hide. But this is really curious choice. He could have stolen the TC and it could have dealt a lot more damage than stopping the TC front 9 racing at coming up. But well, that is not played. That is not played yet. And it's also allowing, you can see, Atlantis to go into the offensive, even with villagers while trying to take down the Migdol. But, well, yep. Yeah. Even Ayak is housed right now, and he is not having enough strength to battle on the right side. On the left, this is basically just a stallish situation, which is why I was looking there a bit earlier. But, well, Kiryudai seems to be hoping that he can at least hold his opponent. But it's probably not going to be happening all that much. This is just waiting for siege boss, obviously. But with Fen right now advancing into Heroic Age, he will be in a pretty good position to defend even against Mythic Age, Kill You Die, as Zeus in there. So at the back, the TC is still not finished. This, this, is, this is confusing to me, really, because you can see that actually TSM didn't buy anything at all. This was obvious play with the ceasefire, but right now player is just going to be building here. A bit of a surprise by the Colossi, but they are probably hoping that they can just push through, that the damage has been done, and will be pushing through himself, player, together with Atlantis, through the Migdos of Hayak, which is so far happening, and they will be just killing the TC reasonably soon as well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> oh my, he actually doesn't have any another TC, and he wasn't, he was impatient. This is, this is bad choice. This is bad choice by him, because he is going to lose this TC, I would be guessing. I would be guessing that he's going to lose this TC before it is finished, but so far, actually Atlantis is not fast enough, and with the army by Ayak coming in here, it might just work for him, but please, don't do this. Don't research upgrades on the TC that is going to be falling under fire really, really soon, and this exactly is, because it takes quite a long time to research, and it just might just as well wait for the extra TCs to be built and go for them there. So yep, you can see... That right now player is actually seeing is actually seeing what is happening in here. Very nice deconstruction. And this is basically countering all the play that player did play in here. And even though he might finish, not exactly positive about it, might finish with the temple, I'm still questioning this choice. And I'm going to be questioning it for a bit longer, I think. But with the military academy, of course, and the temple on the right side, helping. Helping with the fight in here. This Atlas is. Let's not be hasty. Let's not be hasty, but yeah, right now I'm fairly confident that it's going to be finished. So, even though I was against it, it's going to work out for 9 Racing Cat, but really, don't do this, and I would have much more like if actually 9 Racing Cat waited for a bit more safe PC inside his building, inside his base, as it could have been a slightly better for him. But he has advanced, you can right now see 
uh, actually the implosion being cast. Attempting to save the DC, but is it going to be saved? Wow. Wow, he needs to pull his fun. He's not. He's not. Goodbye, DC. Goodbye, TC, and also goodbye. And this got power, and this is basically basically got power because I don't really expect that's going to be <laughs> doing all that much damage as you would have hoped. Yes, also killed his own buildings, so that's something he did not expect. <laughs> that it's actually if even friendly firing, so he would have killed the TC himself. So yeah, good job <laughs> on that. But what's also interesting on the map that it's on the water. There is a bit of a battle as player is attempting to go back in here, but he is countered by Kiliudai, and it seems like that his water battle is not going to be all that much of an important stage, or rather important happening on the map overall. Interesting placement by Nine Racing Cat, which is basically going to allow him to transport some buildings potentially a bit later on. But you can see here that Fen is doing a pretty good job pushing through his opponent, even though he is. Oh yeah, he's on a Demetic, so sorry. I didn't notice that. He is having just copper shields though, and his opponent is having what? Bronze and copper. So yeah, he should be doing slightly better before actually Fen upgrades into all of those. Upgrades into all of those uh, mythic glitch upgrades like iron and champions and whatnot, but still, it's not enough. And even with the mercenaries that are still not coming in, Kiluga is not strong enough to deal with the mythic Zeus of Fen on the left side. The Titan though should be coming up for nine uh, for Lat Ayak. And I would be guessing it's going to go to the left side to push through Fen. Because I kinda be kinda would be guessing that Lats will be attempting to basically just stall on the right side. Uh, and racing get together with Ayak. Uh, but at the same time with the DC right now coming under TSM Atlantis power, even though this palace is shooting at it, it's not going to be strong enough, and yep, it should be reasonably in their power, and Kiluda has lost the 45 TC at the forefront to the siege boss exactly for player, and this is what I was talking about a bit earlier, some minutes, like 10 minutes ago, why it is going to be important to control the water in here. So yep, big roll and TC down, and Kiluda should be... Yeah, it should just expedite his demise because he won't be able to rely on help from the mercenaries as he was right now. It's a bit of them. They are right now coming from his main DC. But he is also fighting two DCs against three and mythical Zeus. And you can already see the upgrades coming in from PS and Fan, and he will be just eating to his opponent like through butter. So good job. But very nice attempt by Lat Ayak, who is right now trying to kill the trade of his opponent. But unfortunately for him, they have noticed. Player is paying attention, and Bellerophon will be killing all those ski saboteurs of the red player Ayak. So yeah, nicely played. And well, that's actually not bad because Argus is not really bad either. Or rather, it's not bad at all against especially just villages. But looking how Atlantis is just now going for a bit of a watchtower spam. And he's having quite a lot of villages in here. He's probably going to be taking care of that quite nicely. So nicely played. This is not going to be finished. Whereas on the right side we see already gold colossi from TSM player, and they are taking care of the pesky palaces that are that are making a lot of heavy fanatics just heavy with copper shields. So that's definitely not enough, as they are pretty direct, direct counter to all those myrmidons by TSM player. So far though we are not really seeing them all that much, we are just seeing exactly <laughs> the same attempt at the bottom, so what you do to me I'm going to do to you. And well it seems like that player has actually finished quite successfully with this build. I'm thinking that we are still out of one underworld passage, but with the direct counterplay by Ayak with the tornado that's probably not going to be seen play anytime soon. And the villagers are going in here. Just trying to go for the dock and hopefully they can build a lot of 3 rams to basically disrupt the trade route even more. And that could be also very valuable for them overall. So this is still not under TSM's power, which is slight victory for Absolutes as because as if they can keep it from especially the Eggy Atlantis, it will help them quite a lot as if they cannot, it will allow his opponent to spam mercenaries because the trade route is quite safe. Uh, of TSMs, and well, if they can somehow secure it for themselves, Absolute, it would be, it would be basically allowing them to somehow come back into the game if they can. Uh, hop light, upgrades, bronze, copper, at least iron mail, so that's a pretty decent upgrade line, but well, 
they need to be careful in here uh, because they need to prevent all those towers as they are being upgraded into guard towers they could be dealing quite a lot of damage that the SMs actually do not want at all so gold colossus coming in with yet another one being being waiting for invaded for uh, but it's basically because you can see that player needs to do something with these boats and so far they are not doing anything substantial and even though oh can he finish yes he can yes he can last villager last villager building the temple at last rather at the expense of his life and this is definitely a pretty big help as the SM player will be able to build some extra uh, some extra call side from here and it might be helping quite a lot to his team on the left side we see the arrival of the of the titan who is arriving exactly at the nick of time because Kiruda definitely needs some help as he's losing quite heavily even I was trying to help him but the titan should be more than enough because he will be he will be put in fan into just oh even some siege boats from what Kiruda so that's nicely nicely played and yeah fan will be put at at least two maybe one TC and that could be exactly allowing Kiruna to actually come back into the game. So yeah, that's nice play. Nice play and could be helping quite a lot to his teammates. So all iron, reboomed Kiruna. And he will be very important next stage of the game. So yet another attempt to actually build the wall at the very back. You can already see that these are already dead from yellow. And this is very important. Uh, because those camels, those camel caravans are actually forced to go into the right side. Oh, something happened, unfortunately. So it's going to be yet another record actually not finished. But since we are steaming, we are going to be seeing the full extent of it quite nicely. So what happened? I'm not exactly sure. Probably somebody dropped. Uh, but to finish the thought... Uh, with the camels, they are going to be forced to go through this part of the map, and this is going to be in range of either siege boats or at least heavy three RMS, or rather at least oxygen grenades, or through heavy three RMS. And well, that would be quite strong indeed. And oh my, this seems packed. That sucks. Oh, that's sucky. That's sucky and pretty big shame because this was a very nice game. It was a very nice game and it's going to be quite sad to decide it sometime else, or rather some other way. Because I can already see that Ayak is having champion elephants with bronze, all three. On the left the titan would be making quite a lot of difference as well. Impost. This seems to be okay. Wow. Wow. You know, this seems to be exactly that I remember at the very end, the elephants in here, that I was checking for the upgrades. Yeah, very nice ones. Bronze mail, bronze shields, and bronze weapons. Whew. So, fingers crossed, still keep them crossed because it needs to survive, survive the first seconds without some out of sync or whatever. Hopefully it will, because this titan on the left side is going to be very, very important, as it's going to turn Fan into two potentially one TCs, and this will definitely help Kirurai quite a lot, because he is, on that scenario, Beast for example, as you can see he's having all irons, so he's very nicely boomed, and very nicely prepared for potential comeback into the game, and if he can somehow, somehow finish with it, that would definitely work for him very nicely, so double bolt into the titan so that's going to stop him quite a lot because that's obviously two and a half thousand in points dead right there and with all those units in here and especially not enough units for Kiruda it would be actually a bit shorter lifespan than I was expecting from this axe titan and this is also very important this side build by Fen even though it is counted by the towers by Kiruda he basically wants to prevent this DC from coming into Fen's hands it's still in him that fan is spreading somewhere that he shouldn't from Absolute's point of view and Kiludai will be forced of this TC for quite a lot longer and he will be forced to hope that he can actually keep fan of the TCs longer longer than actually fan can keep him of the TCs so nicely killed through the water so that's even bigger problem for fan than it was a bit earlier but let's have a look on the right side how's it 
shaping up in here very nicely for Absolats. You can see that nine racing gear together with Ayak are just moving forward right now, exactly as we're expecting. And this is a very, very nice idea with the tower spam. Because even though he cannot be sure that he can build the, uh, the town center, because obviously it's going to take quite a lot of time to build it, he is building enough towers to basically prevent it from coming back. Okay, so that's. I'm, I'm not exactly agreeing with this. I'm not agreeing with this tornado. Because first, tornado is not that strong against buildings actually as you might think, especially with when you have so much so much extra nonsense in here like four towers and the whatnot, because tornado has some kind of amount of damage and it means especially when you have like when you have this let's move for the for the meteors, when you have a fortified PC that's so many hit points that actually tornado will have troubles taking it down just by itself. And since it is traveling around, there's not really any reason why you should think that it will help you. That it will help you kill yeah, the town center. And that exactly did not happen on the left. And that was that was wasted tornado. And I dare to say that was pretty terrible waste. Because obviously this allows the underworld passage form fan to do the damage that actually players did. Uh, that's a huge problem, and especially it will also allow the SMs to build their own Titan. And that was, that was bad play, to be honest, by Kirudai. I didn't like the tornado one bit, but let's hope it's going to work for him in the long run. As right now, he's at least trying to control his TC. And this is a very nice answer by Fen, who is attempting to at least stop his opponent long enough so that he can kill the Titan and then fully focus on his opponent's army. But well, it seems like that Kirudai will be way too late as the Titan is almost down. See how fast he's actually dying to those two heroes and the Colossus. He was able to kill the fortress, that's at least something. You can see that Fen has also lost the tower, but at the same time, the Titan is killed. And this this TC is still not in the power of Kill You Die. And since they are fighting 2 versus 2, and we see that Fen is very nicely upgraded at Iron as well, just waiting for the champion Toxots. Yeah, yeah, just meeting with Mirimidons. That's going to be quite well enough to actually take the TC back. And yeah. Oh my, Kirudai won't be able to push through the left side just by himself. Something else interesting, and no, just killing the trade route as we were expecting, with Migdol trying to protect exactly this trade route, so that's nicely played. And this is also a very nice wall, because he's basically trying to prevent uh, the Camel Caravans coming through the right side, right next to the water. And even though he right now controls it, this was a very nice little play, and was working for him quite nicely. At the bottom, not much happening. And also, this is also the reason why Titan Racing Cat is building the wall, as it is basically blocking the attempts at walling by his opponent. And well, on the right side, the TC is still not captured, and probably won't be anytime soon, because TSM player with Atlantis are both camped on this water, water patch, and they are they are doing a pretty good job of controlling this TC, which means, so far, that actually Absolats are having to fight two TC slides, and considering that fact, they are actually doing a damn good job. At the back, we see also a bit of an attempted wall in by 9 racing it, but it's going to be stopped very easily by a player who is paying enough attention. So, yeah, nice attempt, but not going to work at all that much. Whereas, let's go back to the battlefield on the left. On the left, where Lat, Lat Ayak is trying to move forward a bit with all this with all this very nice tower spam, but he really has a pretty big problem as he's not being able to capture this town center yet. But they are absolutely coming back into the water as it seems like the TSMs are not paying enough attention. And well, he attempted him to actually go into the middle island for the gold. I wouldn't be expecting so, maybe it's just some misclick. Well, let's see the adventures of this transport <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do. Probably die. Yeah, that was just a misclick. <laughs> okay, so let's just follow the normal battlefield, and you can also see that Gold Colossus, Gold Colossi are coming in from Fen in pretty big numbers, and they are supported by player as well, as he has uh, built fortresses in here, and also very nice temple, so he's moving forward, and he's definitely aiming for the TC for himself. He could be able to deal with it. <laughs> Still this transport shift in here. At any rate, this is pretty nicely played right now, but yes, some sand control. And even though the amount of priests is really rising, it's probably not going to be strong enough to deal with all those colossi to get supported by the heavy toxotas and of course the already champion Mimidons. There will be quite big trouble. So this is basically just securing the TC for fan. Whereas on the left there's still a bit of a problem as the water is controlled by a kill you die. Whereas on the right side we see that the battlefield is not really moving all that much. We just see a bit of a tower spam by Atlantis building yet another Migdol as just probably lost one in here. Yes, in, if I remember correctly. 
areas, there is five population limit wasted, not doing anything by nine racing cat, but he is still having a pretty decent army, and with those military buildings on the right side, he is doing all he can <laughs> to deal with the problems at hand. We see even a war turtle, oh my, that's something you don't see all that often, but it was maybe spawned for free, but I don't think I remember it here. I would be guessing that it's actually been made on purpose. So that was nicely played in here. <laughs> to actually help him control the water. But at the same time, yeah, right now he's actually killing it because that's quite a lot of population that he could definitely be needing for elephants in here to actually support his claim into the middle of the map. So right now it seems like that actually player is not doing anything. He's having quite a lot of boats, so he's probably switching just to that, trying to prevent Kiryudai from coming in. And oh, this is going to be quite deadly because uh, almost all the trade cards or trade car ones and whatnot are coming through the middle the top side and they will be right now targeted by those sea chips and also by the trirames so goodbye trade and pretty big problem when is attempted to take the tc but so far unsuccessfully as he's forced uh, to retreat at least a bit uh, but with the amount of villages by player ah uh, yeah he is going for some nice tower spend himself some nice tower spend himself and he's trying to help his teammate fan as much as he can because he's thinking that on the right is basically controlled uh, by the Isis and Atlantis that he's doing a pretty good job in here as it's kind of developing into more or less 1v1 one one between Nine Racing or rather between Iraq and Atlantis seems to be going to much okay exactly as you'd be expecting Iron everything, Champion Elephants, Toth what's it called? Tusks, Tusks of Apedemak, okay <laughs> Whereas the elephants from his opponent are just heavy, and they are just bronze. Okay, so definitely something better could be done in here uh, by Lat Ayak, and that could be the reason why he's actually losing in here. Because that's 742 against 652 hit points, and that's pretty big difference. 100 hit points is a huge difference, and it is making it count exactly in this battlefield. Argus finally making himself count, he's not loafing around. And next to this counter barracks, or what was it? Yeah, is it counter barracks? No, it's actually military barracks, sorry. There yes. It almost seems like that actually Atlantis is slowly pulling forward. This is going to be all about this TC. If he, some side can catch, capture it, it's going to be resulting in a you know, front attack actually and push through the battlefield. But so far it doesn't seem so. And you can also see uh, that the army from 9 Racing Cat is on the right side. And with the Titan right now being finished arriving from his underground hideout he is going to be heading into the offensive very very soon and that's a pretty good unit line of sight upgrade or other relic he's going to be probably coming through the top and wrecking atlantis altogether so i'm thinking that player will be forced to switch to his side yet again because this could allow this dc to come up for uh, absolats whereas on the left the advance is very very slow the tc is still free still not going anywhere you can see there's a lot of water battles still going on by both of these teams as they are still fighting for control of some of the some of the parts of the map and well we are basically just waiting for the second underworld passage we are waiting for this you can see double ceasefire shifting sands and underworld passage these are three very crucial things to see on this map i kind of guessing that the underworld passage will be the winning condition. The underworld passage with the ceasefire will steal some back TC of the opponents and if they time it correctly they could actually be killing two TCs and stealing both of them at once uh, because with two double ceasefire they can do anything they want. They can literally own two TCs with just a few villages to build them. But let's see if that is going to be happening in this game or if it's going to be decided in some conventional manner. Okay, so that's quite a lot of Helipoli. It seems like that actually Fen is switching basically only to Helipoli with a few Colossi and it seems like that actually both of them are doing this. Both player and Fen and they are basically going for it quite strongly and looking at the army of just priests for Kiludai who is having pretty big problems of course as he's had two TCs. How many villages does he actually have? 115, that, that's just... That's just too much. <laughs> he's having 150. 115, which means that he's having 30 population. Or what am I saying? Actually, not that much. He's having much less for any kind of army. And rain. Huh. 
that's that's to protect the titan gate i'm pretty sure about it and you can see already those guys moving in and that's also a very nice reaction because you can see that fan was going in and exactly kill that recognized the threat so he has basically nullified it just by himself and it buys him all the extra time to go for all those barracks and well hopefully put the titan gate onto some decent health that he can protect it a bit longer but i wouldn't be counting on that because as soon as that is finished it's going to be it's going to be coming down to all those Helipoli and all those Colossi and whatnot. On the right side, the Titan, Titan though, is doing its job and doing a pretty decent damage to the opponent. But looking at the pretty huge amount, amount of hit points that has already been lost, you can see that's already below half, quite a lot, and the amount of priests in here. Decent amount of upgrades in here. It's not doing as well as I thought at the early bit. And, uh, sorry bit earlier in the game and it's not really working all that much for Absolat is going to be dead pretty soon. This disease is coming up soon as well. But still it could allow it could allow Absolat to push through if it wasn't. For actually the SM player playing this quite nicely. He recognized that the help will be needed on the right side and he is doing this quite nicely. Because obviously this support with the towers and those very strong tanks into the Colossi is keeping the opponents Absolat from capturing the DC from themselves. So nicely played. And basically this this is allowing Atlantis to secure this choke point just by himself and we will be waiting for something funny to happen in here. But is it going to be happening through some underworld passage or whatnot? Well these guys are not arriving in there anytime soon and I'm looking just for the Helipoli and they're actually all dead. <laughs> It's kind of curious, there was a lot of them, but somehow the SMs managed to lose them and I would be guessing it's because the SM player had to switch to the right side, which meant, uh, which meant of course that a fan wasn't really equipped to fight. So they keep to fight against all those mercenaries and we see the Titan right now coming up, the first one for the SMs and well, we will be seeing yet another embodiment of the Egyptian god Rath on the left side as well, so yep. And he even skipped it, <laughs> skipped the animation, thought that repetition is boring, so he is going into the battlefield a bit sooner in here. But yeah, it's not like it's going to be make, making any kind of difference at all. So second titan to deal with for the SM fan, but he has already quite nicely prepared with very brutal tower spam and quite nice fortified walls. And he's moving and rather continuing with them, as you can see. There is on the right side, the Titan is moving forward still. Rather, that's already the other one. But the first one has already died. And you can see all the villages from Atlantis coming somewhere forward. Yeah, didn't even take out the second TC himself. So yeah, he didn't do as much damage as Absolus definitely hoped. So here we see. Attempt to add the tower spam by Ayak, but unfortunately Ayak doesn't have enough villagers. And he's also faced with quite, quite a lot of barrage, or quite decent barrage, by all those sea chips. And this is definitely something that the SMs are doing well, or rather quite well indeed. He definitely could die. And some siege boats would be much better. You can already see naval oxybiles as we are talking about it. And well, <laughs> Atlantis is thinking that this is a, this is a point in the game that he can actually be making a claim on the PC, <laughs> which is damn gutsy. Look <laughs> at all the villages building the towers, the elephants, the catapults. Really, <laughs> this is kind of cool spot to go for it. But well. With the Titan coming into the fun as well, he doesn't have anything else to do because right now he's just trying to capture, or rather protect the choke point and go for the TC because once he's able to capture it, he is going to be halfway there to secure the right side of the map altogether. So, he seems to be aiming for the TCs, which he exactly should. Let's see if he can actually move forward though, because Absolats are doing a pretty good job with actually delaying him. And oh, Atlantis, come on, wake up, you need to move somewhere. Yeah. Just move them somewhere and this is not going to be way all right through. Pull this and move forward. This is going to be needing quite some micro to actually uh, get through because this is very nice path blocking on the right side of the Titan. But let's have a look on the Titan on the left. Uh, where kill you guys? Where can kill you guys? Birdie is already halfway down into the health and with all those towers, the Helipoli and the Titans or other Colossi. Yeah, I'm kind of afraid that this time is not going to do anything, anything at all. Well, it kind of sucks for Absolat, I was hoping for them that they could be doing something extra. But so far it's not working. Whereas we see also that player has slightly overdid it. 
slightly overrated with all the boats, but he is killing quite a lot of uh, trade cards or trade caravans in here from his opponent, and it's definitely working very, very nicely. He's also attempting some kind of sneak build. It's nicely played with Temple in here as well, and this is really well played. And once this fortress is finished, which it will be, because it seems like that. Oh, finally he's noticing, he's clicking in the mercenaries, it's not going to be though fast enough and this fortress is pretty, pretty big problem as it is going to stop to the stop to the trade route of the opponent's upswats altogether. And yeah, here we see that upswats are recognizing that this is not going anywhere, with the titan on the left as well not moving anywhere and the titan on the right being exactly the important thing that is turned in the battle in TSM's favor and TSM's are winning. After a bit of a delay with the restore, <laughs> the game number four on Highland, and they are winning the whole match semi finals against Absolats 3 1, and they are advancing into grand finals. Well, we are still waiting to see who is that going to be. As on the right side, we are still waiting for one quarter finals between Deities of Death and their opponents, the Brazilian legend, but the other quarter finals, GSS F1, so the semi finals, GSS versus Dot or EL. Not exactly sure what this means, but let's have a look at the post game in here. Yes, some player. Well, he was in the pocket, so of course, Atlantis, though, very nice score as well. And Kiludai, I really liked how he played on the left because he was holding and very nicely. But on the right side, Upslots, I don't know, they played really well because I think that player kind of squandered his opportunity with the Underworld Passage, he didn't do all that much. Basically wasted the opportunity to steal a TC with ceasefire, which, uh, to be honest, I think could have actually ended the game right there, right there, a few minutes after that. But he allowed Absalas to come back, and nine racing it with Ayak did take the opportunity by the hair, and they did pretty well indeed, keeping Atlantis and player in check, right choke point. But without the TCs, they had a very tough battle to fight against their opponents. Most mercenaries and most heavy elephants, that's interesting. Guardian of Yaw. That's actually that's actually Argus, right? Upgraded if I remember correctly. Could be. Let's have a look. Tech tree actually, when we can. Yeah. Yeah yeah. That's exactly that. That's Upgraded Argus. Right, so let's have a look at the post game on this on the graphs. Civilian units kind of okay. This is a pretty brutal drop in here. Yeah, he lost a well, ton of willies in here. Ton of willies indeed. But it's in the middle of the game, so it wasn't really anything game changing. Well, nice army by Nine Racing Cat, but unfortunately for them, it didn't do enough. Didn't do enough for Upswats. Alright then, GG.